You've been in, a, in this tour for a while now, on tour? Yeah, but kind of like, uh, Oslo is actually right in the middle. Right in the middle. The 13th show out of 25. Yeah. So we've been away, you know, since I think we, we left Australia on the 17th of October. Okay. How, so how has Europe treated you so far? Yeah, Europe's Probably been too. very good to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah What's the good. best about being in Europe? Um, I think one of the best things is just, well, the food's really good over <laughs> here for a start. The food's always really good, but also the, um, just the amount of different cultures you get to see. So, like Cramden's, like one place, and on a daily basis you're going to new places and seeing different areas of the world that are so different from each other as well. Mm -hmm. It's quite. Um, it's quite, uh, the world's very diverse, so, yeah, it's, it's really um, enriching to be on tour over here in that, in that sense. How does it feel when you are live on a stage in Europe compared to Australia? Is there a huge difference or music lovers are the same all over the world? Yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of similarities, but there are sort of things that sort of give each, uh, each sort of region you go to a sort of a different sort of feel I guess in, in Australia I guess people are maybe it's they're a little bit more um, used to us as well because it's a home country and mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> they have a sort of uh, we, we have a, a bit more success I guess over there and these these shows are a bit different because we're doing uh, smaller places than we do in Australia but um, the reaction from the audience is, is very similar which is very um uh, what's the word? It, it's very encouraging. I bet, yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, it's really, uh, it's really good to be able. To, and, and I guess people over here don't necessarily go as, uh, no, maybe not at this stage because it's early, sort of. It's a bit, it's a bit of early on in our European sort of career. But um, people tend to sort of sit back a bit more and watch and take it in, which is just, which is really refreshingly mm -hmm. different, I guess, as well, because it gives. It doesn't sort of affect us in the way that we play. We don't sort of have a feeling like maybe they're not digging it as much, but they because they applaud at the end of each song. <laughs> that's a good song. So that's good, and um, yeah, they just obviously just want to take it in, and and I guess that makes it easier for everybody who's there watching as well, so they don't have to worry about the crowd being, you mm -hmm. know, quite uh, like more like a mosh pit, which is kind of good. I don't think that works for you. No, no. <laughs> well, it doesn't in Australia. They sent, they do have mosh pits really? and stuff. Yeah, it's crazy sort of <laughs> times as well. I see we've seen like a circle pit commence in, the, in like the quietest bit of New Day, which is like probably the, the lowest, the, the, the quietest part of our <laughs> set. And there's a circle pit starting. They're upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, opposite part of the world. <laughs> exactly. Upside down. Uh, that means that if Slayer plays in Australia, everybody's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think your music is hard to digest? I think it just takes a little bit of time, definitely. It's not like an instant and an immediate thing. So in that sense, I guess you could say it's hard. But I think that, you know, it's not like it all just... It, it takes a few listens and then it all just gets digested at once. Mm. It's been more like just a slow process of taking off layers of the music because it is quite... Um, and we do write quite, um, you know, complex music, but it's quite detailed in all the ways that it's put together. And I think sometimes that it, it's it's one of those things. The more you listen to it, I guess, the more you, you get out of it. And that's just from feedback I've had mm. from hearing what people sort of say about our music. And I guess when we write, we sort of build it quite extensively as well. So it makes sense that there's a lot more to get out of it the more you listen to it, maybe. And I guess the the timing of some of the songs as well can sort of make people have to listen to, you know, to, to absorb that. I mean, even when we play it live for the first time, we have to sort of figure out how we're going to perform it. And that's not something we sort of sit down and have a meeting about or anything, but it's more just the more times you play it live, you start to get a groove for how you, how you move with the music as well. And in this writing process, or uh, what do you think brings up this complexity? You take a lot of time to write. Is everybody coming in with ideas, or it's just one sick mind yeah. <laughs> composes everything? No, I think, it, I, I think it's sometimes. Uh, it, sometimes it, it depends on the origin of where the song might have started, and mm -hmm. sometimes if it starts with um, just one instrument, sometimes that can be um, a little bit. 
a little bit more sort of um, conventional. Yep. But if, it, if when we, it's normally when we write stuff in a jam room and we're just jamming and it sort of develops and we might start to shave beats off here and there and sort of get it to be a little bit more progressive, I guess, and that's it's just for our own interest where we kind of feel the vibe going. But a lot of the time, I mean, it's not like we actively set out to write anything in, um, you know, anything other than 4-4. It's just... <clears throat> It's already got a groove, I guess, when you're just jamming, and it doesn't take. Sometimes, if you if you wanted to say, oh, I want to write a song in seven eight, you can. It can sound a little um, robotic, and it might not sound as natural as if you just wrote something mm. and it happened to be in seven eight. Which is what we kind of do. We just write it, and it happens to be in whatever time signature it is, and that's. I guess it, it, that's where we get our the pulse and groove from. Is that it's already quite natural in its process and its conception. How do you know when things should stop evolving in your songs? And how do you end up, how do you know, now we have a song? I think sometimes <coughs> we, don't, we don't always finish our, our tracks before we go into the recording process. And I think it's the putting the deadline on, we kind of have to really stop looking at, maybe there's a, at, at one point in a song we might have like four little forks that it could mm. take, you know, and that might, that's and you just have to a, decide. Yeah, and you just make a decision and you go, well, we've got to move it up. What's, where, what's the strongest and most natural feeling for what this song should be? And that's the pressure of having to finish it as well makes us uh, sort of see that a bit clearly, mm-hmm. more clearly than, than, than okay. previous, yeah. Do you ever regret any of the choices? Do you wish any of the songs would have taken? No, no. Sometimes when we're at that point there might be a little bit of a disagreement but I think over time we sort of all just get used to it I mean there's things that now when I listen to the record I don't I don't even can't even remember what I might have been stressing (laughs) about because it's just you get so close to it you know Mm. that you um stop to see the bigger picture for what a song can be and you might have some hang up about something that you guys you, you might have been working on and there <clears throat> might be a section that you were really into that's not in there anymore but you, it stops you from seeing the song as if that section never existed okay. yeah that's true so <coughs> yeah um the new album As- asymmetry asymmetry mm-hmm. whatever you call that <laughs> yeah, asymmetry. is it made of completely new songs or is it a lot of bits that never made it on the older album there are some i mean every every uh album that we've done since the martyr so two <laughs> has <laughs> had <all> yeah <laughs> had some um component of it that might have been left over it might have been a beginning of just might have even just been a riff or something that we never did anything with them and we'll go well let's uh let's work on that you know now that we've got the time because sometimes um <clears throat> when we get close to the time when we have to start making the record and it's you know getting close we kind of have to decide which songs we're going to work on and, and some of the songs we go well we won't finish working on that one because looking at all the rest of the material mm-hmm. we've got we think this is a better cohesive group of yeah. songs that's what i'm asking yeah that's and it. yeah that's sort of the thinking that goes behind it and then we work on them later like for example nahash was uh one that was very close to being on sound awake but it's quite different to what it was i'm really glad that we didn't just push it through and to be honest i don't even think it would have fit on the record because i think sound awake's 76 minutes i was really close to being 80 minutes which is what the maximum yeah. fit on a record anyway so i don't think it was going to fit but um i mean there's stuff now that we've got left over that <clears throat> you know we can work on stuff that we've got work left over from other um some long long yeah. periods ago as well that we've just never done anything and it's weird to sort of revisit them sometimes because being so many years on you, they're they're quite different to where you were at the time when you wrote them and they actually sound exactly. like exactly. that time and you have to sometimes you have to reinvent it a bit to make it more current for what this version of carnival is at this time you know because that's all that records are they're just really just musical snapshots of where the band is at mm. at the time <coughs> I've heard some people making comments that your album has, or yeah, it has influences from your trip to India. Okay. Is yeah. that? Um, I think. Not. Yeah. Not necessarily. I think um, some of the way that we've written. I mean, if the, some of the structure, some of the 
um, the, the keys that we write in and, 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 the, and the scales that work with them, like um, sound Middle Eastern anyway, but, but you know, like a dominant harmonic minor is always going to sound slightly, um, mm. you know, Middle Eastern or, or Indian or whatever, and that's just a, a that's just what that, that, that it sounds like when you write in that, and um, I think if anything we, I was, maybe the influences from India, I don't know what they are, because <laughs> uh, not consciously anyway, maybe mm. they, there are some sub, subconscious influences that we're not really actively aware of when we put in the music but um, I mean India is a very fascinating place I was very blown away when I went there because it was the first time I went to Asia I, living in Australia it's very close to Asia and a lot of people go to Bali mm. for, for a holiday in Indonesia or Thailand and I hadn't been there anywhere so I hadn't seen a lot of it and it was the first time I actually went somewhere else and went wow this is like going to an this is like going to a new world because it was there's just not so much um, of the familiarity you get mm-hmm. going to like a first world country. You know, there's just similarities everywhere. You know, you've got similar um, artists that are popular and, and are like you know commercially popular in all of the countries as well. Um, so you found the asymmetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, see, they they have a they don't have the same sort of musical market that we've got so it's completely right. different and I know that like even in Scandinavia as well it's it can be quite d- sort of um, different to other parts being like you know a lot more of the sort of death metal and, sort of, and stuff is, is probably yeah. more popular here than it would be probably, yeah. yeah but for India I mean the only types of western music that really make it through are heavy music mm. and techno because they're not language dependent because you know some people might be screaming and fuck I, sometimes I don't even know what they're saying so it's not really important the, the lyrics so it's it's not a language barrier for that music it's just about the expression of energy mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but back to your latest release overall what would you say the album is about? I'd say like for me it's it's actually very close to representing the reality of where we life itself and how it's not perfect and you know I think we try a lot of the time to sort of understand the world around us by trying to relate things you know and science does it with uh, you know um, physics and and uh, and there's maths as well and these are all like perfect formulas that and then, and then it, the reality of things is that they need exceptions to these rules that they might cover a lot of it but it doesn't cover all of it and um, you know, it's more about like, yeah, just just a real sort of realistic view of of life and even the life cycle. Because the first song and the last song are supposed to be life and and death, but it's not death in the, in the traditional sense where there's fear associated. It's actually trying to make it a comfortable thing, as comfortable as the life. So because it's just natural. So it's part of it. yeah. But do you wish life would be perfect? Wouldn't it be boring? I, d- I don't know what perfect is though, <laughs> you know, like uh, I don't, I don't, it, it, I think if, maybe, maybe it would just lose its diversity, um, you know, like it's like if everyone in the world liked my band, I, th- I think there was something wrong <laughs> with the world, because, you know, it had lost something, because I think um, there's no such thing as absolute right or good or or anything, I think these are just opinions and sometimes people forget that there's not a silent authority somewhere with a list of mm. of the best of everything and, and what in the correct way because it doesn't exist it's and even through time you see that shift the, the morali- morality is not is, is time dependent for, for that yeah that's true that's you know. true and uh, what's the part that you're most proud of on the whole album musically uh, versus or anything else um my favorite my, i think sky machine is probably my um my the, the, the track on the record that I feel I feel the most reward from um, finishing just because it's such a long time to finish it it took about two years to finish writing wow. it and that was the first song we started really working on because <laughs> really? we, we only really worked we only really wrote for two years on this record because we were touring for two years after Sound Awake and then we started writing in the third year so um, that it just it was such a complex song and there were so many parts that and some of the things that we didn't actually end up putting in the, the song, but 
um, I feel like when it finally, when we finally got it, I was really proud to finally finish it, just because it was such a long time as well, and I'm and I really like playing it live. This is the first tour where we've actually been playing it live, and um, I think it's it's feeling really good live. It's got a really yeah, nice quality. sort of yeah, yeah. repulse to it, and yeah. it's good. And um, I guess you guys, do you get rich from making music in Australia? No, not really. I think I think um, we are lucky enough to be able to do it for a living, okay. which is really all that we ever wanted to do. I mean, it, the fame is not important to us in the slightest. I think, if anything, we're kind of a bit turned off by what it means to be famous in this mm. time. You know, like what, who is famous and why they're famous. I mean, like I don't want to be fucking famous like Miley Cyrus. That can, I, I'm not interested in that kind mm. of shit at all. I think it's really. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my dad doesn't have a mullet either, which is a plus. But but, uh, but my, the point of my question is, what keeps you guys together as a band? Just the love of music, the you know, Lo love of the music and, and love of creating them, being able to create the music. Like I feel really fortunate to be in a band with all of the guys, and I feel like we've we work really well together in that, and uh, and I think that we've we've been able to to sort of grow something you know together and it's taken a long time and it's 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 not an overnight success to be able to do this for a living and i i think that we've really worked hard and, and i think maybe we've we, we've we've been lucky as well to get there so i mean all i really want to do is is just to be able to do music full time and that's what we're kind of able to do now and um, it just means you you can spend all your time working on music and, and it's not a luxury that many people have so I feel really fortunate to be able to do that so I don't take it for granted. None of us do. We are very, um, I think we're all pretty humbled by the position we're in more than anything so. That's great to hear. And a uh, non-band related question more or less. How is this uh, downloading versus buying music in Australia? Is there a lot of um, piracy or yeah, live oh, streaming? Yeah. What's the there's heaps of yeah heaps of downloading and piracy, and I think that that's one thing, especially with the release of our last record, we we got a lot of actual sales mm -hmm. for our last record, and I think that's a testament to the fan base that we have in Australia because it's not like what I was saying before, it's not overnight success, and they've they've kind of been there from beginning and seeing it grow as well and they feel like this is something that they belong to as well and that a, the loyalty from our fans in Australia is you know amazing that's fantastic and that's that's been really good and I guess there's you know in other countries and stuff it's not as easy to control and it's not going to happen but you know I, if people do download our music I just I, I just love it if they came to the show live mm. you know because I mean that's I think that's how it goes today, more or less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's something that, you know, more and more today, people music is something that people don't necessarily feel they have to own, and that mm -hmm. just seems to be something that's happened worldwide. That's yeah. just a feeling that this is it's not something that they feel they have to own. They feel, but they feel like they just need to access it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. You just kind of have to work with that, I guess, and and just try to control. Torrents at least in the first <laughs> week when you release the record, <laughs> and, then and and then I mean, but, track. you know, people people have told me, you know, look, look, I, I downloaded this stuff, but I shared it with all these people, and and, and they're all at a show, and I was like, well, look, that's cool, man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go buy a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs>